Horror has been a genre in video games for about as long as video games have been around. The first game considered by many to be horror is Haunted House for the Magnavox Odyssey, a game that is quite literally just a card game with an overlay that you just slapped onto your TV. This was a two-player game where one person is the detective and the other is the ghost, and you both pass this big-ass controller with wheels on it around while calling out cards like Skeleton, Skull, Ladder. Now obviously this game, for the modern eyeballs, is about as scary as Kirby Return to Dreamland. Now let's be honest, that game's actually horrifying, but still, my point stands. In 1972, however, this was the start of something, and that something was, in fact, horror video games. Haunted House's setting is, well, the Burger King down the highway. <laughs> if you decided to play this game with, let's say, your shitty older brother, he could tell you to play the detective, and that gives him the power to just shut the console off at any time and just scream in your face. This actually has happened according to some people, and this starts the trend of Jump scares. Jump scares in video games are almost as common as a Disney movie with a shitty live action adaptation. For every Five Nights at Freddy's or Haunted House, there are about 600 Alone in the Darks or Garden of Ban Bans. And what do Alone in the Dark and Garden of Ban Ban have in common? They were both just released in the past 10 years. With the sole exception of Five Nights at Freddy's and the absolute most recent Resident Evil games, Horror, for the longest time now, has become a contest for who could put the most jump scares in their game in the shortest amount of time. And one of the catalysts for this crime is... Deep Fear. Released for the Sega Saturn in 1998, this game is a prime example of great survival horror. You play as John Mayer, a SEAL who's sent to investigate a ship wreckage that's infested with mutants. The game plays basic survival horror, but this game is one of my favorites in the genre because one of the most unique features in this game is this little oxygen supply tank. Basically, what can't you do when you're underwater? Breathe. What can help you breathe? Oxygen. What happens when your oxygen runs out? You die. Unless you refill your oxygen tank at random points throughout the game. And don't ask why you can replete your oxygen from machines that supposedly was in a ship that was wrecked like 40 years ago, but just be happy this feature is in the game. Just be happy that a feature like this made it to a game like Astroneer, which while not a horror game and not underwater, still a fun little game that requires you to check your oxygen before you suffocate. Now, why is this game being brought up? Because while not on the same level of popularity of Resident Evil, and definitely nowhere near as polished, I mean, come on, it came out on the Sega Saturn. It had just a feeling to it that I think is on par with Resident Evil when it comes to being scary. And in all honesty, I feel that just comes down to how the game looks. The era of 1995 to around 2004 to maybe 2005 with Resident Evil 4 was in my opinion the best era of horror. Now the plots for a majority of these games were garbage, and every single game, even the big shots, had horrible voice acting that literally just sounded like they grabbed a guy off the street and threw him in a studio. Chris, you're alive. My words exactly. Where's Jill? Aren't you with Jill? However, the true horror of these games not only rely on the suspense and jump scares, but the limitations of the game itself. D, yes, D, was a game released in 1995 on the PS1, but not before it was first released on the Panasonic 3DO in 1992. The 3DO was known for having these movie-like interactive experiences with their games. Some good, and a lot bad. But I do feel that D falls in more or less the good side of things. This was one of the first iterations of interactive horror. Basically feels like you're playing a choose-your-own-adventure game, having to do the right thing at the right time, and like the choices actually matter and stuff. And even if the game runs like Doom on the Super Nintendo, it still feels horrifying. The game is only two hours long, and it's unable to be paused, or saved. Which is a common theme among these games. Which I feel is an unpopular opinion here, but I think this is something more games should do. Not only does it give you an excuse to not clean your filthy ass room because I can't pause the game, mom, 
It adds to the experience because if you were trapped in a room where your crazy father murdered several people, would you just want to sit there and be like, oh, uh, hold on, dad. Yeah, just, just give me a moment. Even think of all the big horror games of the past 20 years. And Dark Souls. You cannot pause a majority of these games, and if you just need to sleep, you have to pray that you don't wake up to a game over screen or Laura's dad jumping out of the screen and telling you to clean your damn room. But hey, maybe the no pause thing isn't for you. And to that I say there are plenty of games that are perfectly okay with pausing the game. And you can even save it and uh, oh wait. The classic GameCube game, Eternal Darkness, is a game filled not just with horror, but is berating you the entire time, with constant pranks being thrown your way, most of which not even being jump scares. Now granted, the volume button being messed with on your TV would have been cool if you still own a Zenith 13 inch 720p TV VCR VHS combo CRT TV BR 1312Z tested and working no remote control. But you can at least respect the effort being put into it. Not to mention the part where it fakes out deleting your entire save file. And this is a 7 hour game we're dealing with here. Not a little walk in the park here. This is like a full on cross country drive here. All wiped away in a matter of 5 seconds. But not really, because again, it's just a prank. And there are plenty of other examples here that I'm not even going to begin talking about. If I even mention Silent Hill, this video is going to be 20 hours long. And once again, it's almost like I just have to thank the weird, uncanny feeling that these games had due to the limitations and all the polygonal shapes of the characters. Because games like D, Eternal Darkness, Early Silent Hill, the low graphics and limitations of the era just, again, create this weird feeling like, like it's not supposed to be real, but you're playing it. So it kind of is real, but it doesn't look real. It's just vaguely a human. And honestly, I feel this mindset has to give a lot of thanks to the internet. The idea of liminal spaces or the back rooms, it gives you a feeling that you've been in a place before. You don't know why you think you know this room, but you definitely get that feeling of deja vu. You feel like something is familiar, but there's just something slightly off about it. Modern games have these super advanced graphics that can take up like 400 gigs of storage and make your PC or console sound like a damn 757 getting ready for takeoff from your bedroom. But back in the mid 90s, all you had was these weird polygons, bad sound design, and horrid voice acting. But in my personal opinion, when this is done right, it can be far scarier than any modern piece of horror, just due to the fact that, like Liminal Spaces, the lack of something forces your brain to put pieces together. Like is this a monster or is this just my 23 inch CRT breaking? Don't get me wrong, the Resident Evil remakes are beautiful, Silent Hill remakes are amazing, and a decent amount of AAA horror looks amazing, but even looking at Silent Hill PT, it was probably the closest a game has ever gotten to replicating that uneasy feeling that the older games gave me. Largely in part due to its lack of complexity. Most of PT is just you walking through the same rooms over and over and over again. I get it was a demo, but still. Seeing these large, carefully articulated designs is impressive. And I'm not discrediting the amount of effort it took to create something like this. Here, I'll give credits right now. I just feel that horror has been in a weird spot for a while now where it's style over substance. Something looks scary, but in reality it's not really scary. 2012 YouTuber classics like Amnesia and Outlast had their shine, but now everyone's trying to make something like that with jump scares and limited resources. The only f thing I feel has succeeded especially recently is Five Nights at Freddy's. And what do you know, the game was built with a cardboard box and became one of the biggest franchises in horror because of it. Slender Man was literally an internet horror story, aka creepypastas, which again, the game was built on cardboard and still carried more of an uneasy feeling than most AAA games can even touch. I know these companies have a budget, and I'm not saying to cut the budget, I'm just saying more isn't always better. The PS1 era all the way to the GameCube era of games were simultaneously the best and worst era of horror. There was so much experimentation happening that it was ridiculous, but it was ridiculously fun. You ever watch Firefly? Boom, Martian Gothic. You love Final Fantasy? Boom, Parasite Eve. 
you love whatever the hell Overblood was doing, then boom, Overblood. I didn't say they were all hits, but think about it now. Tell me one AAA survival horror game, not called Resident Evil or Silent Hill, like what comes to mind? Like what, Instinction? Again, I just want to leave by reiterating that I don't think budgets need to be cut and everyone needs to go back to PS1 Polygon graphics. I just think it's time for horror to get a kick in the ass again. Five Nights at Freddy's is almost 10 years old at this point, and all the AAA titles are pretty much the same age. And it was 10 years before that since we had something truly amazing like Resident Evil 4. So, best thing we can do is keep our fingers crossed that companies understand that more just isn't always better. And they should really think about what made the titles like D or Resident Evil or Parasite Eve big and just go from there. So thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you later.